Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of the New Stack Makers. Today we are talking about open source workflows. In particular, we're talking about Cadence. And Cadence is a workflow developed initially at Uber and being used now by InstaCluster. And today we're going to be talking with Emra Shikher, who's with Uber. Emra is staff software engineer at Uber. And also joining us is Ben Slater, Chief Product Officer at InstaCluster. My co host today is Joe Jackson, Editor-in-Chief of the New Stack. Great to have you all here today. I want to just start by asking about Cadence and its history. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Cadence, Emra, and how it originated and what you were seeking in, in its initial uh, creation? Um, sure. Uh, I was not here at Uber when the project started, but I have the context that I can share. So basically, uh, as you know, building distributed systems is not an easy thing. And building it right in the first attempt is even harder. So in an ideal world, uh, computers don't fail, networks don't get partitioned, databases don't get overloaded. But in real life, all of those happen. And I think around 2016, when Uber was growing really fast, and uh, there was a lot of scale challenges, a lot of requirements coming from different product teams, People wanted to have an easy solution to all of the classical distributed system problems. And they needed a way to build systems that are scalable and reliable. So uh, Uber had some engineers who worked on Amazon simple workflows in the past. So they said that the same solution could work. But the problem with simple workflows was that it was not open source and it would be costly and limiting uh, for the scale that Uber needed. So they started building a similar solution that is named as Cadence. Uh, it has been an open source solution system since then. Uh, it is used extensively at Uber as well as some external companies as well. The primary value add of Cadence is that it allows the product developers to state what they want to do in their products, describe their intentions, uh, and forget about the distributed system problems. And Cadence uh, would make their system uh, distributed and reliable and scalable behind the scenes. Uh, that is basically what the Cadence is for. One of the things in this cluster we liked when we first came across Cadence, which was probably early last year, um, is its design really it is a developer tool. Uh, you, you write your workflows in, in normal Java, uh, uh, Go, uh, a couple of other languages supported as well. And, and in, you know, in, the, in the modern environments, it's... Uh, developers do do sort of everything compared to a lot of the older workflow tools are um, designed for sort of business analysts and people to write the workflows in uh, diagrams or, or sort of more English-like things. Fits in really well with uh, a, stand, a, a modern development environment as well as, as, um, as Emra said, taking away a lot of the complexity and allowing developers to just focus on really the business logic that's uh, unique to their situation. So how so? How is it better? I think it's it's really uh, for me it's just a great abstraction of uh, a lot of a lot of complexity. So um, if you were to code this stuff from from hand scratch, as Emma was saying, there's a lot of failure conditions and scaling uh, you know, to allow you to scale out to multiple hosts. Uh, a lot of complications to do with that uh, that you end up having to code yourself. Um, Cadence gives you a really good uh, framework to just plug your business logic code in uh, and then all that stuff uh, just kind of works. Sometimes giving a, a example use case helps a lot to understand what Cadence is really doing. Imagine you are building a very simple food ordering service. What you would need to do when the customer hits the order button is that you want to take the payment. You also want to tell the restaurant that the order has to be prepared. So all of these are totally separate systems. They, they don't use the same database. They don't use the same transaction. And somebody needs to orchestrate that payment happens, plus the order is also placed on the restaurant side. If one of these fails, you want to also roll back the other operation because you don't want to have a customer who paid but didn't receive the order or received the order but couldn't pay. Um, so these kind of problems become really hard in real life when you try to solve them at scale with a lot more requirements. So what Cadence does is Cadence gives you a SDK, 
uh, where you can uh, describe what your workflow steps are. You say, I want to execute A first, and then I want to execute B. If B fails, I want to roll back A. And uh, in a traditional world, in a very low scale system, you would basically put all these rights into a single database transaction and it would be as simple as that. But in a distributed environment, you have to account for all of the network failures, all of the throttling, all of the rate limitings and observability requirements around where a particular order is in its life cycle. And Cadence basically gives all of these out of box uh, without requiring the application developer to worry about things like retries, times, uh, timeouts, uh, or any kind of like saga pattern implementation details. Um, that is kind of uh, the, 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 the primary goal that Cadence is uh, working towards. I think that's a, a really helpful example. It remind, remind me to one point that workflow, I think sometimes using the term workflow for Cadence sometimes leads to people having a misunderstanding of, of, of what, what it's about. Um, it can, certainly can do workflows in the traditional sense of the word, but uh, you know, I also use the term microservice orchestration, um, you know, just a distributed system in, in environment. Um, there are a lot of a lot of use cases that don't necessarily fit into the um, pattern that people might originally, you know, what people might think of as, as workflow uh, at, at first glance. How does it compare to uh, uh, business process execution language engines, people? We've been hearing about people for a while. Is this something that you would use for people? Do you use people more? Or what are the differences? So I think I mean Beeple is is an example of that that I talked about before the the older style of, of workflow where it's it's designed as a higher level abstraction for business analyst type people to use to define uh, their workflows. This is a is a developer tool, um, and and then I think uh, you know the other thing is is the scales that Cadence operates at is is definitely you know, beyond what most you know, Beeple engines would would be capable of, of working at. At least without a great deal of difficulty. And Emra, anything to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think that was spot on. I think the traditional workflow solutions were meant to basically take a uh, prescribed uh, static number of steps to perform for a given operation uh, and then just do it uh, outside of the context of the actual product, like do things in the back end, in the, in the background. Um, but with Cadence, uh, what people actually needed from Cadence was to be able to uh, run multi-step operations with very high performance and uh, also decide the steps dynamically as the operation is running. Like, for example, if, you, if, if a customer places an order, you don't necessarily know the steps you will have to go through during the life cycle of that workflow. You may use the credit from his account balance you may want to charge his credit card, depending on the situation. You may want to apply a coupon or the restaurant may reject the order for some reason, right? So these steps that you want to go through are very dynamic. And I think that is what makes Cadence uh, different than plenty of the older generation work of engines where you can basically create an unlimited number of steps in a given workflow and run them with high performance. So high enough that they can serve your production flow rather than only running in the background. Yeah, I'd say it, to me, it sort of just reflects the modern world as well, that today we expect developers to be able to understand the business, to work directly with the business. And Cadence is a tool that then allows them to, to express that understanding in the the languages that they're familiar with, which is you know the, the development language, you know, whereas in the old world that that um, that Beeple was designed for, you always had those layers of business analysts and and uh, those kind of people because we you know we thought developers needed to just write code and not worry about talking to the business. Whereas you know the the modern companies, Uber being a great example, very very close alignment between developers and and a deep understanding of the, the business problem. So, I mean, if I'm building an application, a microservices application, uh, is it that, how do I get the, what is the relation to the, uh, to the cadence and the different microservices? Do I need to implement that across all the microservices or how does this work? Architecturally, how does it work, I guess? 
Yeah, so basically what you do is uh, you define your sequence of operations as a workflow, uh, which basically says that when I begin, this is the first thing I want to do. And then when it completes, I want to do this. Sometimes you can define parallel operations or you can put a sleep. A sleep that can be as small as one second or as large as 10, 20 years. It doesn't matter. So basically you just define what you want your workflow to do. And then uh, Cadence, SDK is going to keep track of your intentions in the workflow code. It will see that you want to start an activity, and then it will talk to the server side, Cadence server side, saying that this worker, this workflow wanted to start this activity. And then the Cadence server knows the intent before it attempts running the code. And then it is going to dispatch that task to a random worker in the worker fleet, saying that, uh, can anyone run this task, basically? And then when one of them runs the task, Cadence server is notified saying that this task is done. It will talk back to the workflow saying that the function that you try to run is completed and this is what it returned. And then the Cadence workflow will just like move on to the next step. When you look at the code, it really seems like a single threaded application. You are just like starting a function uh, using some interface, some abstraction. And then behind the scenes, a lot of database records are inserted, some queues, uh, are populated, some pollers are going to fetch the tasks. So the impact on the application developer is that they write an application that looks like a monolith, but it actually is a distributed system. And if any machine, any worker goes down in their cadence workflow scope, uh, it does not affect the workflow's result at all. It may only affect the latency of the workflow because cadence server needs to realize that your worker died and it needs to start another worker. But when another worker comes to pick up where the previous one uh, left off, it will only resume from the line of code that the previous worker died. So it does not start things from scratch uh, just because a machine failure or some network issue has happened. Could I call it a workflow uh, orchestration engine? Uh, yes, uh, we usually call it as a, a workflow and microservice orchestration engine. How does it work? And you wrote, you ran a post on the news stack written by the both of you um, on Cadence uh, workflow engines for taming complex processes, and one of the, and what you say primarily about how it works it preserves the entire state of an application in durable virtual memory, not associated with any specific process. How is what you described uh, up to to this point? Uh, re reflective of how Cadence works. Yep. So there is a design pattern called this event sourcing. So the idea behind event sourcing is that you may not know the current state of something, but if you know the sequence of events that happened in the past that led to the current state, you can reconstruct the state. Like for example, a user creates a uh, opens a bank account on day zero, they have zero balance. The next day they put $100, next day they took $10 out, the following day they put another $20. So their account balance is $110 now. But as soon as you lost this information, you don't know how much this person owns, but you know what they did in the past. So basically you can get all of the history events that say that I started with zero, put 100, removed 10, put another 20. So you know that the customer currently has $110. So how that translates into Cadence is that anytime a workflow tries to run an activity, we record that on the database saying that this workflow wants to run this. And then when the activity is completed, we also record that as well, saying that this activity has completed and produced this result. And then the next activity happens and we produce the same kind of like event log as well. And if your workflow crashes, so let's say you had a variable in your memory that said, the number of items ordered is three, right? Let's say we lost that information, the worker died and it is no longer in the memory. So what a random worker is going to do is to fetch all of these history events. Uh, it is going to go through the events one by one, saying that it ran activity A and then activity B, and then it scheduled activity C, but before activity C came back, it died. So you know that this is exactly the line of code that you are supposed to run from. You also know how many steps you went through and how many food, how many food items have been ordered 
by that time. So that is what we mean by the state is preserved by cadence server. So the workflow code no longer has to worry about persistent this state because it is persisted by the events that can be event sourced to rehydrate. So does this allow them for that long, like, like that uh, duration of time to pass before an event is called? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's right. If you, if you do a, you know, uh, Emery gave the example of you could have a sleep for, for 20 years in the middle of your, your workflow code. Obviously, you can't just uh, sleep for 20 years and, and leave a process running and, and hope that the server doesn't reboot. So that's because all of the events that led up before you get to that sleep have been saved. Uh, it can it can stop the process, and then when it when it wakes up again from that sleep, it replays those events into the workflow code and gets you back to the same state you were before the sleep occurred. What would be some different approaches to that um, outside of the way that uh, uh, Cadence uh, manages that orchestration? I think the, the traditional approach, you know, you, you're talking about things like distributed transactions, uh, you know, trying to trying to write your own code to save to save the state uh, in um, after every step of the workflow and uh, do that. Um, you know, there is as event sourcing, as Emery mentioned, is a well known pattern, but having to build your own event sourcing engine from from scratch is is a complicated quite a bit of work as well. So you know, there are um, are uh, solutions there definitely add complexity and even harder to do at the kind of scales that, that cadence can operate? Um, Does it require? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, a very common alternative that I see uh, people at Uber or at other companies uh, using instead of cadence is they are going to excessively use queues and uh, event streams similar to Kafka, RevitMQ, and stuff like that. Basically, you have like multiple services that you want to orchestrate, you want to scale them independently. You put a message into a queue and you expect someone else to pick it up and do their uh, their turn and then generate the next task, task for the next uh, agent in the pipeline. Such systems lose the observability very quickly. Once you put things into a queue, you no longer know if the task is still in the queue, if it is picked up by someone, did it get dropped? And if someone says, what is the state of my workflow? You don't really know out of 10 queues, which queue currently the workflow task is waiting on. So these are kind of like the approaches that people first took when they were breaking monolith into microservices. But uh, soon enough, they noticed that using uh, queues and uh, event streams excessively was harming the main uh, a lot. Cadence uh, comes up with a solution where you know your system is distributed, but when you look at the code or when you look at uh, the workflow history using the Cadence tools, everything seems like a single application generating a single sequence of logs or events. Uh, it doesn't really seem like a distributed event system, even though a lot of queues and workers are running the thing behind the scenes. That's a, that's a great point. In that kind of example, even, even working out what your workflow rules are when they're distributed across you know, multiple microservices and which queue they're listening to and the logic within each microservice uh, can be really hard, let alone tracing a single transaction. Whereas here yeah, with Cadence, it's you've got one nice, simple to read uh, bit of code, which is defining your, your workflow rules and how they uh, interact with the microservices. Okay. So when I think about this, I wonder why would people do it themselves? Is it, you know, with any framework, I guess there will be trade-offs, correct? So they're, they're, they don't want to make those trade-offs. So they, they have maybe the experience and, you know, a technical capability to create their own. I, I'm wondering why, if there's any other reason why they would just create their own as opposed to using Cadence. Yeah, look, I mean, Cadence is a, is a relatively new, new tech. Uh, I think it's 2006. 16, am I right, Emma? That it was, it was open sourced. Um, you know, so not everybody knows about it and how to use it. It's probably one of the reasons. And and there is a there is definitely a learning curve. There is some rules about how you have to code things to to get to get them to work properly in Cadence. Uh, like determinist, your workflow code has to be entirely deterministic. Um, so it, you know, one of the big pieces of advice I Typically, is if you've only got one small workflow requirement, then all the overhead of learning how to code in Cadence and then learning how to run Cadence is probably not 
going to be worthwhile. But, you know, uh, it's not until you've either got lots of workflow type requirements or a, a need to go at, at um, the highest levels of scale that, that it makes worth the investment to learn how to how to use Cadence, would be my view. Do you need a do you need a a, a data store? I, you know, for... you do. I mean, it is like like a lot of these tools. There is complexity in, in the operations side uh, as well, which is see where we're coming into it uh, from Instacluster to take to make that easier for people because you do need uh, a, a database. You know, so you need to be able to run Cassandra, Postgres, uh, MySQL is a few different ones supported at production. You know, production grade. You need OpenSearch, Elasticsearch, and Kafka to, to take full advantage of the features underneath Cadence. So there's a reasonable bit of complexity there to get it operating at, at um, uh, you know, production grade uh, levels, I'd say. So what are you introducing as part of this? And Job, then I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, so Instacluster, our, our managed platform, we already have uh, Apache Cassandra, Apache Kafka, OpenSearch, uh, a few others as well available on the platform. We've been running them in production for some some very big customers and some very small customers for uh, you know seven or eight years now. Um, so we certainly know how to run those backing infrastructure uh, at, at you know, full production. So we're uh, adding a cadence offering um, to that, which will take advantage of those you know, production ready things we improve and technologies we already have there. Uh, will allow you to come in, you know, like our other offerings, fill out a fill out a form, use an API, have a fully production ready cluster up and running in sort of 15, 20 minutes, and then backed by our 24-7 support and operations. So that whole pain of of how do I get this thing prod ready is taken away for for you. Uh, and you really just have to to write your code um, while it's still you still have the um, the surety of knowing that it is all open source code that's running. And if you did want to run it yourself, um, there's no sort of uh, hidden proprietary magic in there that's going to make that impossible. So it's primarily a service, a cloud service. Uh, Instacluster's offering is Cadence itself is an open source piece of software under the Apache two license uh, that anybody can. Sorry, MIT license, I think, isn't it, Emma? No, it's MIT. I, I yeah, MIT, MIT yes, yes, MIT, MIT license. I got that wrong. MIT license, uh, but it's still a you know very open license that anyone can take and run themselves wherever they want. But Instacluster's offering is is a, a managed platform, it's a managed service. But there's a, also there was originally a connection with the AWS Simple Workflow Engine. Yeah, the, or the, the, the service. Yeah, yeah. The approach to the problem is basically first, uh, I think, brought by uh, Simple Workflows. Uh, I have not used it personally, but I know that even the Cadence SDK initially was uh, very similar to the AWS SDK, and perhaps some code was even. Uh, by using the open source licensing uh, was added to the Cadence SDK. So the semantics were the same, uh, but uh, over time, uh, Cadence also evolved. Uh, probably Simple Workflow has also evolved. I would say that the, the way they attack the problem using event sourcing and a rich SDK is kind of what makes them uh, a common thing. Uh, and uh, the biggest difference of Cadence compared to Simple Workflow is that it's an open source solution. And uh, I know a lot of companies that are using uh, Cadence just because it is open source and they are able to control it and run it themselves. So let's talk a little bit about how is it being, how do you see Cadence being used or Instant Cluster being used out in the community? What sorts of applications are developers using it for? Beyond, of course, Uber and some of the other big name customers. You mean use cases? Yeah. So. Uh, when you uh, get familiar with how Cadence works and what it is able to do, you notice that you can use it in a lot of places. So let me talk about Uber. Uh, at Uber, it is used for uh, the top tier, most critical infrastructure services, such as storage provisioning, health monitoring, uh, deployments, and stuff like that. Some business critical operations, such as placing orders or uh, making money movements from account to accounts. Uh, or uh, some background processes such as monthly statement generations or sending push notifications to riders after a certain amount of period of like taking a ride and stuff like that. All of these things that are either event-driven or time-driven uh, or uh, they're just like super quick, but uh, eventual consistency is really important. All of these use cases are very good fits for Cadence. Uh, and uh, like, for example, before joining Uber, I was working at a different company 
where we really needed some solution uh, to solve our distributed system problems. We looked at all the options out there and we saw that Cadence was the one that scaled the best. So at that time, we were also considering building something on our own, but we noticed that with the requirements that we had, with the capabilities Cadence had, it would be a waste of a couple of years to rebuild it from scratch. Uh, and it just made sense to just adopt Cadence and uh, develop our custom solutions on top of this reusable um, tool set, I would say, because it is not only a service, it is a SDK plus service and some other tools around it. Yeah, I mean, as you can even hear from Emra's answer, just what they use it for at Uber, it's the, the business use cases that um, Cadence applies to are extremely broad. Uh, I tend to say, you know, any, anything that has a defined start and a, and a finish and, a, and, a, and some steps in between, which obviously applies to um, a large number of, of use cases, uh, there's, a, there's a chance that Cadence will, will fit in uh, to that. Nice, nice. Uh, I would imagine that Cadence servers are picking up a lot of interesting observability data around performance, around errors and whatnot. Uh, is that something that I would, would I tie observability in on this or would it be separate to keep that, be best to keep that separate? I think observability has multiple dimensions. When you say observability, there is like metrics aspect of it. There is logs uh, aspect of it. There is audit logging uh, and state visibility aspect of it. So Cadence helps with uh, some of these dimensions. It is not going to like reduce your need. It's not going to replace a good metric system. It is not going to replace a good logging system, but it gives you a lot of things out of parts. Like for example, for a workflow, you get the workflow history that is shown to you using a, a, another open source project that we have called as Cadence Web. It is going to fetch the history and show you in a web page where you can see what happened to your workflow step by step. Uh, and then uh, there is also a lot of native metrics that are emitted from not only Cadence server side, but also your Cadence worker side, since you are using the SDK. Those metrics are going to be a good starting point to understand how loaded your workers are, how busy your business processes are, and are there things that you want to uh, optimize further or increase capacity, add more workers. I think uh, Cadence overall gives you a good starting point of uh, logging, state visibility, and metrics. And of course, there is going to be always cases where people want to add their own custom visibility tool or integrate into their own tech stack that they have in their company. Uh, we try to make Cadence as flexible as possible, as pluggable as possible, so that those things can be uh, added as well. But it gives you a perfect starting point, basically. I was going to say, one of the, the more interesting community contributions that I know is, is uh, in the works for Cadence um, is the ability to, you know, those events that Emma talked about that get saved at each step to, to emit those events to a queue as they, as they occur. Um, and then to, to uh, con then obviously once they're on the Kafka queue or so forth, you can consume them everywhere you are. So that'll, um, I think, be really interesting to see what people do with that, but give you a yeah, really great insight into the steps that are going on through your workflow if it's a use for that. Hey, something else I, I saw on your blog that uh, you are looking at uh, gRPC as an alternative to some of the client libraries. Uh, we've been covering gRPC a bit lately. Uh, what are the advantages of gRPC? How could a developer work that into their own uh, development? Yeah, gRPC is basically, uh, so uh, Cadence on the server side uh, is basically four different service roles that have a pool of machine per role. And all of these are talking to each other using some network stack. Plus the Cadence workers also need to talk to the Cadence server side to persist what they are experiencing. Uh, so all of this communication was using T-Channel, which was another open source networking uh, stack uh, that was gaining popularity earlier. Uh, but nowadays, uh, gRPC has become so much more superior that uh, there is a lot of tooling available in the community when your networking is basically using gRPC. Uh, and there were also a lot of like uh, customer requirements that needed security, like MTLS uh, over uh, the, the networking, because they don't always run Cadence and the workers in their own trusted data center, but sometimes they want to deploy it on public cloud and they want to make sure things are secure. 
Um, so uh, the security requirements plus the uh, tooling aspect of the gRPC ecosystem made us uh, ba basically uh, swap the T-channel stack in Cadence uh, and replace it with uh, gRPC so that it is easier for uh, users to manage it. We're about at the end of our time. I want to thank everyone for participating today. It's been a great conversation about uh, you know, about Cadence and its uses and uh, how it's been architected. I'm sure there's a lot more that we could discuss. I want to thank our guests, uh, both Ben and Emra. Thank you so much for joining us. And Job, our, our editor-in-chief as co-moderator, thank you very much uh, for uh, more information. You can go to... Emra, where can people go for more information? Uh, cadenceworkflow.io is the website for all of the information. There are also links to our public uh, Slack channels where we discuss with the community users uh, very actively. Um, so I think cadenceworkflow.io is a very good starting point to learn more about Cadence. Great. Well, once again, thank you for your time, and we look forward to uh, learning more about Cadence as it develops. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.